Wes, we have to start with Paul George. We're going to, just to be transparent about how we're recording this, it is 8.16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we are recording this evening of free agency, a couple hours after the market officially opened. And this is going to evolve. This is going to change. Things are going to happen. We're going to get a lot of slop. We already got... Some stuff happening, sort of a quiet frenzy, apparently still a billion dollars in contracts handed out between extensions and whatnot, which speaks to where the NBA is at. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money for like 15 guys. But let's start with Paul George. Woj has just, as we started here, tweeted that Paul George, his agent, and the Clippers have had a conversation that resulted in, quote, no new movement, end quote, on a deal. And it seems like Paul George is, quote, unlikely to return to the Clippers. On top of that, Woj says that the Clippers are strong front runners to land Paul George and the, the 76ers, Sixers. The 76ers, yeah. excuse me. I said the Clippers just thinking about Steve Ballmer getting mad. Sixers are the strong front runners to land Paul George and the Sixers will meet with George in California tonight. So, Wes, we're, we have talked about Paul George in the fit. We have talked about what this could look like. I think if and when this actually happens, that will be the time to do the, hey, how does Paul George fit here thing? So let's look at this from the Clippers side. Now that we think about how this has happened, and we've gotten here to where it basically feels like it's just a matter of time that he is no longer with the Clippers. How do you make of how the Clippers have handled this entire Paul George situation? Well, according to Brian Windhorst, that they, when they signed Kawhi Leonard to the three-year contract extension they didn't have any conversations with paul george about that so if the clippers goal was to get Kawhi and paul george to sign similar contracts and, and kind of play out the life of those contracts together on that same timeline well they didn't tell paul george about that plan yeah and i don't know that they told Kawhi leonard about that plan either did they think that maybe Kawhi and paul george were communicating i don't know but if that was the plan then they failed at the plan right and so there's no doubt about that Paul George walking away from the Clippers in this way, where they get nothing back, considering what they traded to get Paul George. And I understand it was for Paul George and for Kawhi Leonard, all that stuff they traded. But trading away Shea Gilgis Alexander and the first round picks and all those things to get Paul George. And you get to the Western Conference Finals one time. And I, as as many times as you do that whole deal, it this this did not work out. This did not work out. And I think if you're a Clippers fan, you've got to be really disappointed by how this era is ending and the fact that not only were we not able to bring back Paul George, but he's going to walk away to the Philadelphia 76ers for nothing. And now we've got Kawhi and James Harden, who also re-signed here. I'm sure we'll talk about all that in here in a yep. second. I do have some bigger Clippers thoughts on that. But in terms of just how they handled all this, F if we're doing grades, you know, it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't get worse than this. Right? You lose the player and you get nothing back. It's the worst outcome. The communication part of it to me is is kind of emblematic of this whole thing, Wes, because I, I understand I understand like why the team if I'm trying to put myself in their shoes and if I'm Lawrence Frank, if I'm if I'm that camp and I try to think, okay, why do I not do I need to tell Paul George every little thing that goes on with Kawhi? Like I understand if maybe you don't, you maybe assume that these guys talk that this information's a lot out there anyway. But it just, if I'm Paul George in the era of superstar and we live in, I'm also reading that as, do you actually care? Like, do you actually want me here? Like, do you actually value me as, like, a part of your team to some degree? And I think that just sends a weird message from the get-go. I mean, the fact that the Harden thing has never had this sense of going elsewhere, and maybe they just decided, to, you know, to the point you made it earlier about the Lakers and two superstars, maybe the Clippers are making a similar choice here. They kind of this never felt like Harden was ever not going to come back. Like, we never really heard a strong linking him to Dallas or any or the you know obviously not back to Philly. But and any I think other I, place. I think that's partly just because the market wasn't there for yes. Harden and it was there for Paul George and Paul George was trying to leverage that. Yeah, no, hundred percent. But even even just like that breakdown in communication and then that and piece of information getting out west. I'm just like this is done. The moment that came out, the moment that someone got Wendy got that information from whoever got it and that came out saying like hey Paul you know didn't he know about Kawhi before anyone else you I don't need I don't even need the the follow-ups about his agent and Lauren Frank having a conversation it's over it tells me that that is over then which is just a weird this whole thing has just kind of been weird the last couple of weeks 
And with the Kawhi part of it, Kawhi's not blameless either in this, right? No. If his no. plan also was to take shorter years and maybe a little bit less money so that he could continue to play with Paul George, who he wanted there in order to sign there in 2019, right? Then it's a failure on Kawhi's part too because you didn't pull off this plan either. So there was a breakdown in communication either between the Clippers front office and Kawhi Leonard and how that, that information was going to get communicated to Paul George. It was a communication breakdown on Kawhi Leonard's part because if Kawhi is like, hey, I want to be here for three years with Paul George, maybe tell Paul George that. It just felt like the whole plan was here and nobody included Paul George in the plan. So it was just really uh, poorly executed on all fronts. And it does speak to me a little bit about why I've never really trusted a Kawhi Leonard-led team. Mm. He just doesn't... On the court, when he's healthy, he's awesome. And I, I don't really need to point that out, but it feels like I have to. But he's not the guy that leads the team, right? He, even in Toronto, that was... That was Marcus Saul and Kyle Lowry, you know, like that wasn't Kawhi Leonard isn't really like a get the get the troops going kind of guy. And it just and he's so siloed in his entire NBA experience. You go back to the whole Spurs thing where he was just taking care of his knee injuries by himself and the hamstring stuff all on his own and was never really involved or kept the the Spurs in the loop. This is the biggest knock against Kawhi Leonard is if he were to just involve more people in his decision making and his thinking, he probably has more championships. He probably has an even more successful career than the one that he has. But he just operates like over here, doing his own thing. And I wouldn't be surprised if Paul George, as upset as he was at the Clippers front office, was sort of over the whole Kawhi Leonard experience too. I got a reporting on this, obviously. Yeah. My guess is Paul George is looking around. And he's like, some nights I'm the number one option because Kawhi Leonard does woke up and decided he didn't want to play, and James Harden woke up and decided he didn't, doesn't care about basketball on a Tuesday night and I'm the only one that has to carry this thing. And I played 74 games last year and we think we got a real shot and it's January and it's February when we look like world beaters and then Kawhi Leonard can't finish another postseason. Like what if Paul George was just like, yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it, man. And unless they're going to give me more money and more years and all this stuff, then I don't really see a whole lot of reasons for me to come back. And that's looks like what's happening. Yeah, and they're good. they didn't budge on the fourth year. That's also been right. reported that he wants the fourth year, and that's a big deal. And you know what, Paul George, at your age, if you can get the four years from anyone else, I cannot blame you for wanting to do that. So that's where we're staying with Paul George. Uh, it feels like he's going to be a Philadelphia 76er sooner rather than later. Let's go to James Harden now. The other big, the other Clippers thing in the news here is that he's going back to the Clippers. Two years, West, $70 million, a player option for year two. The other move I want to put in conjunction with this is that Russell Westbrook has opted into it the second year of his contract for $4 million, and it seems like he is going to be traded with the Denver Nuggets interested. Maybe we can come back to the Nuggets later a little bit when we talk about KCP and him going to the Magic, but James Harden back to the Clippers. I love Wes, honestly, more than anything else, that he has a player option and that we could be doing this dance of James Harden wants a ton of money again in a year. And remember, this is the guy that ended up here after he threw the big stink about not getting the four-year max from Philly. But I, I do, if you are going to do some semblance of, you obviously re-signed Kawhi, you kind of needed to do this. And I also do think what Harden was last year for most of his time with the Clippers, ball handling, I think aging into what he is at this point pretty well. I think motivated, buying in with Ty Lue. Everything Harden was, even if they didn't you know, get out of the first round, like for what it was and for what how Kawhi being out kind of shaped everything and, and injured, I do think Harden was pretty good for them. A version of what he is now that I still think is worth this contract. But um, it's obviously this is this is still hedging a little bit on holding on to whatever this Kawhi air is ultimately going to end up being. Yeah, for the record, I really liked what James Harden brought to the Clippers last year. A real point guard, a genius-level yeah. passer, a guy that could take the load off of Kawhi Leonard and last season Paul George. And I and, and this makes a lot of sense for him to come back. Now, what does the rest of this look like for the Clippers? I think in some ways, as much as they screwed up the Paul George thing, and this, this might sound crazy, but going forward, it might be the best thing for them. Yeah. Because in the... When they constructed this team, essentially in 2019, but I know they got James Harden last year and stuff like that, but they always sort of wanted that third star there. Um, it was a very different world, right? It was a different CBA. Uh, it was a world where big threes were in vogue and dominated the top of the league, and that's not the case anymore, right? The The big three is gone. It's more about a uh, big two, two max players on your roster, and then a bunch of complimentary high-level role players. And the, the better you could do that, the better positioned you'll be 
to win a championship. And I don't, I think the lifespan on this Clippers team was basically over. And I think the Clippers maybe understood that we might get three more years out of this thing, but we're really uncomfortable kind of going into that fourth year with Kawhi and Paul George and all that, which is why they wanted that three year window. So with Paul George leaving, it opens the door for the Clippers to build a roster that makes more sense in today's NBA where that wasn't necessarily the case when they first put this thing back together. And if your two max players are Kawhi Leonard and James Harden for a couple of years, Harden is still limited, but he's still a really good player. And his most important function is being an innings eater in the regular season and allowing Kawhi to not have to do all that stuff. And then you, no matter what, we're always going to be relying on Kawhi Leonard being healthy in the postseason. There wasn't going to be a world where it was Paul George, James Harden, and an injured Kawhi Leonard, and this was going to work, right? So with or without Paul George, everything was always contingent on Kawhi being healthy. That never met, that never changes. It doesn't change now. But if you can go out and kind of re figure, retool the roster around Kawhi and, and James Harden, then I think there's a version of this that could be really good still in, in the Western Conference. Now, I don't think they're going to be better than what they were no. last year, especially when they were having their best moments in, in, in January and February. But this is a very important pivot point for an organization that as much as the PG Kawhi thing failed, it was still one of the most successful runs in franchise history. And they have an owner that's willing to spend money. They have a front office that should learn from this mistake and can hopefully adjust going forward and figure this thing out. Now, what's plan B for the Clippers? Is it DeMar DeRozan? And everything I just said about not doing the three max level stars, they just quote, they say, you know what? We'll, well just replace Paul George with DeMar DeRozan. Perhaps. Which is right? like, would which would cost less money, but, you know, would, it's also, that, that basketball fit is obviously very different. You know, like, you're, like whatever Wes it is, I think this is going to look different. Like, this is going to be is. a different structured team next year than what we've seen. I would like them to not do that. And again, retool in the new CBA world where you have your two max guys and then just go get high level role players, figure out ways to do that and do all those things, get accumulate some more assets and all that stuff. It does not feel like that's what they're going to do here. Um, and the Clippers are just going to keep clippering, I guess. It's, I don't know. I, I this You can't feel we, good if you're a we did get a, fan. We got a Clippers. We have a Clippers statement. We have a Clippers statement. Paul George is definitely not coming back. We have like an official statement uh, from okay. the team. Om uh, Yomishushik from ESPN has tweeted a statement from the Clippers. People can go find this and, and read it. I'm sure they have by the time they're listening or watching to us here. But basically, they cited the new CBA, saying yeah. that the CBA was a big factor. I think this is the summer of the apron. Brian Winner wrote a story about this at ESPN. They also said they explored an opt-in and trade in, opt-in and trade scenario, but it would have left us in a similar position as paying PG, Kawhi, and Harden all at once. And. On top of that, they said the gap was significant as far as the contract. So it doesn't feel like it doesn't sound like they ever got close. So we'll miss Paul at the same time. We're excited by the opportunities we've now been afforded, including greater flexibility under the new CBA. So that's basically what I was saying. So maybe yeah. it's not Demar Derozan, or if it is, it's not at a max level kind of contract. And yeah, it's, this is Demar an feels like now. a mid level kind of thing more than anything else. Honestly, for what he is, I think like that. Like maybe that's not what he wants to settle for. But that for if you're going to do that. He's a mid-level guy. I think like any of the good teams that could get him, that's probably what I'd want to pay. So, yeah, based on what that was, it's exactly what we're seeing here. Is this team felt like okay, we only get two max guys. We're picking James Harden and Kawhi, and we're gonna let Paul George walk, yeah. and I think that's okay. But the next steps in this are really important. They're really important. Fascinated to see what they do. Um, they've, you know, they've which signed, also might, by the way, yeah. that I'm sorry, but that might explain why they didn't want to engage with the Warriors because all the the contracts that would be coming back in a Paul George trade, maybe that's not what they wanted. They were really looking at this financial flexibility as the reason why you let Paul George walk. 